Hey everybody, today I wanted to show you what I got. I got a little, little rider boat trailer. It's for like a 16 foot boat. But the problem is, is my little 10 foot Dale Denning sailboat that looks terrible because it sat underneath a stupid tool of popular tree all spring and part of the summer long. It just, just got my boat really dirty. But this will come right off. We're gonna get the pressure washer and clean that. But I acquired this little rider trailer from a friend of mine that wasn't using it because the Dale Dennings is a little hard to maneuver on your own. And I thought it would just be better to get a trailer for it. So the first thing I noticed is the lights were missing. The guy had a pair of the lights and we already put the new lights on the trailer. So that's done. That was pretty, pretty easy. So the trailer's lights are done. But the biggest thing I noticed is on this wheel, the grease cap was missing. And you can see how dirty and nasty the grease is. So my son and I lifted it up and put it on a jack sedan and we only towed it. The guy lives like two miles from my house. So we just put it up on the jack stand and hear that? The bearings do not sound very good. And you can see that that tire has a flat spot in it too from sitting so long. This is a 1988 Little Rider trailer and that does not sound very good. The other side still has a grease cap on it. So I think we're going to take this side apart and see how bad the bearings are and get the numbers off the bearings and get the get a new set of bearings and a new grease cap on this side. So I'm going to show you how I take this apart. So we'll go ahead and um, set the camera here. Get a good center you all. Okay, there we go. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to take a rag and we're going to clean off some of this grease because this should have a nut and already there is part of the carter key so we'll just go ahead and start wiping this down there we go and as you can see it's got a carter key so i have a pair of diagonal cutters we'll go ahead and pull this down and pull this one down and then you use the diagonal cutters as a lever and you pull the carter key out. So you got the carter key out, set that aside. Now sometimes you have to use a pair of channel locks to get in here and loosen the nut, but this nut is pretty loose. So we'll go ahead and take the nut off. And you can see how, so we have a nut and we have a washer and you can see how wet the grease is from with liquid. So set these aside now. So now to get this bearing out, okay, I didn't take the tire off because this tire is so light. So we'll get to take the tire off probably at work when we go to clean the bearings and clean everything out. So to get the outer bearing out, you just take and you smack the top, put your hand here to catch the bearing, and you usually just smack it on the tire. Now guess what? This doesn't have that style of bearing. This has a, no, I think it does. I do believe that this bearing might be frozen in here. Or does it have a retaining clip to keep the bearing in here? Hmm, I don't know exactly what's going on here. Usually the bearings just pop right out. But for some reason, this bearing is not popping out. Uh, I don't know what, usually these bearings just pop right out of here, of the race. And it doesn't seem like it's one bearing. I thought possibly with one bearing, but then again, maybe this still has a piece of the uh, um, this might have a piece of the uh, K 
cap stuck in there keeping the bearing from coming out. Let me get a screwdriver and see if I can get this outer ring off of here and uh, see if we can get that bearing out. Hold on, we'll be, I'll be back. All right, well, we're back. And the reason why that bearing wouldn't pop out is it appears that this still has a piece of the grease cap right here, which I do believe this had the self -gre the greasing style caps, like the bearing buddies. So that is part of the bearing buddy. That's why this bearing wouldn't come out. And this bearing is just nasty. So, uh, so let's take a peek at it. And yeah, you can see how it's black and it's all pitted. It's, um, this bearing is definitely wasted. So there's also another bearing on the inside that has a, has a, uh, has a grease seal. Let me show you that. So when I lift the tire up and turn it around, that's a grease seal that's holding that bearing in. And usually what I do on to get those out but I don't think I can do it on this one because yeah the nut doesn't fit usually what you do on cars is you put the tire back on the axle and then you would put the nut back on and then you would slide this off as like a slide hammer and it would pull the bearing out but the problem is is this nut is so big that you can't do that. So I do believe that bearing is probably wasted also. So we're gonna have to get bearings and race for this. So for this one here, what we'll do is, so like I said, there's the seal. I really don't wanna destroy the seal um, because there's probably a number on it that I'm going to have to get to get the right to get the right seal. And I know the inner bearing. I'm going to replace the inner bearing. So I'll show you what I'm going to do. I'm just going to go ahead and flip this over. I'm going to take a screwdriver. I'm going to put it on that inner bearing. And I'm just going to tap on that inner bearing until it pops out. And it did pop out, so there's my seal that popped out, and it it should be replaced too. But I didn't want to damage it because right there, there is the number I need right there. It's a uh, N. It's so hard to read. It's a N O K seal, and then the bearing, and then the, and the number is like a 48780. I do believe I'll have to get a magnifying glass. And then here is the inner bearing that, of course is all full of dirt, but let's wipe it off. And it's it's all pitted in black also. So both the bearings over here are are bad. I do believe they're the same bearings. Yeah, I do believe it's it's gonna take the same bearings. So I'll probably just go ahead and change the other side. We'll probably need to get that up on a jack stand too and spin the wheel over and see if we need four bearings. But I think we're gonna end up having to replace the bearings and the races. So let's look at the races in here. Let's wipe some of this grease out and see how bad the races look. And yeah, you can see in here, see the black. The races are supposed to be nice and shiny. It's all rough. These races are wasted. And to get the races out, I'll clean all the grease out. And I'll, <coughs> to get this one out, I'll come through the other side with a punch and I'll actually punch this out of the hub and then punch this way to get the outer out of the hub. And while we're here, the tires did hold air. Let's see if I can find. Well, I don't think these tires are so old. The date code isn't right. It says 78, but there's no way these tires are from 1978. The trailer's in 88, so I'm not going to be able to use the code. They didn't start doing that until fairly recently. All right, everybody, let me take and um, get this to work, and we'll take the hub out. We'll clean all the grease. We'll get all the uh, races out, and we'll get the, the, the we'll clean up the old bearings. 
to get the numbers out of these bearings to figure out what bearings we need. I'll probably just go ahead and buy four brand new bearings, four new races, two new seals, a new grease cap, and we'll just replace all the bearings and I know everything's good in case I take this on a long trip. Alrighty, we went ahead and took the boat off the trailer and put the jack stands underneath the axle and that's still on a couple center blocks over there. So hopefully we'll be able to get over here. I should be able to squeeze myself in here to get this tire off. Actually, this side doesn't sound bad, but I'll probably end up just uh, buying four bearings for it and a new, you know, grease grease type cap for the other side probably have to buy them in the pair so I'll get this side apart and we'll take everything to work and get everything cleaned up and see if we can get the new bearings ordered alrighty we went ahead and I pulled the left rear tire off with the bearing and here is the outer bearing and as you can see it is all black the black is basically means it's pitted so this one also needs bearings i was correct uh we went ahead and took the boat off so now this side also needs bearings so we'll go ahead and take both these rims and tires up to work and clean the tires off to see how the tires look might have to get a set of tires for it too but we definitely need bearings all the way around on this trailer uh the grease looks terrible this is a 1988 trailer i bet you they've never ever been greased All right, everybody, we're back at the shop and um, we're cleaning up the old bearings and the seals and the hub and everything. I wanted to go over something that I showed in the previous video that I did wrong that I want to make sure that nobody else does and destroy their bearing. So, and I'll explain why I did it this way. So, this is the inner bearing that sits in here and then the seal sits here. So, what I did is I took a screwdriver from the other side and a hammer and I actually beat on the bearing to push the seal out okay well you can damage the bearing by doing that but the reason why I did that is because I wanted to save the seal because the seal has a number on it that I need to try to match a new seal up I'm having a hard time finding these seals luckily these seals are still very pliable as you can see and I'm gonna be able to reuse them so the way you're supposed to do it is you're supposed to take a screwdriver and rip the seal out. But when you do that, you end up destroying the seal. But I knew that these bearings were all nasty and wasted that I was going to have to replace them anyway. That's why I went through the backside with a screwdriver and beat the bearing out to push the seal out to save the seal so I could reuse it. So uh, we're getting everything cleaned up. I'm really surprised that the amount of grease that was in the hubs that the bearings actually failed but that just shows you the power of water when the water mixed with the grease it made the grease no longer lubricate the bearings properly so I got the uh, bearings and the seals that I ordered from the internet here's one of the bearings and the new race and here's the hub and I'm going to show you how I get the races out I have this flat punch I always take over to the grinder and I try to flatten that down as flat as possible. And then I'm gonna reach in here at an angle and take the hammer and smack on it to drive the old seats out. Problem is, is there's my seat installer. And the problem is I only have three adapters. This adapter is a shade too small to drive it in. And this adapter is a shade too big and it's not going to fit down into the hub and then the third one is too big so I don't have the right tool to drive the seats back in properly but what I'll go ahead and do is I'll knock the seats out and we'll go from there to show you how I get the seats knocked out So like I said, I just take and I have it on a piece of wood. There's plenty of room here for the seat to fall out. Set that on the piece of wood. You take your hammer and your punch. And you just go. 
opposite sides. And as you can see right there, the seat is now almost out. So now I have to put it in the vise. Open up the vise and tap on it. And as you heard, it went flying out and it even landed in the trash can. Where'd it go? Right here. And it even landed in the trash can. So we'll take the two seats. They look like they're the right ones. So now I gotta figure out a way to uh, put them in without damaging them. I was thinking about taking the old seat and turning it upside down and, and tapping it in that way. But that's metal against metal. These are aluminum, the, uh, the tool. They're aluminum. So I might wait until the tool guy comes to get the proper tool, I'm in no hurry. So what I'll do, I'll go ahead and get all the seats knocked out and get it all ready to go and figure out if, if he's got a seat driving tool on his tool truck. If not, I'll have to figure out something else to do. All right, so I decided not to wait to look in the tool truck to see if they had the proper tool. So here's the race, a new race. The new race goes down in here like this. So we're gonna take the other race tool that goes in the outer edge. Well, actually first, we're gonna get this down in and get it flush. So, and these are made out of aluminum that aren't supposed to damage them. So there, we got it down flush now. So now I'm gonna use this one that does fit down and does fit on the edge of that race. And we're gonna go ahead and drive it in as far as it can go. So I took one of the old races and I cut a groove in it. This fits now in here and that makes, makes it so I can get it back out. So now I have that in there and now I can take this piece here and here the tone change. It's that other seat is now seated all the way in. So I had that seat put in. Well, actually it's not all the way in. I think it's got and my thumbnail, my fingernail went in. Let me try it again. The back one did go in all the way. Let me hit this one again. Let's see. Where was it? Ah, see, that hit flush. So now I'm going to have to use this tool that grabs it on the outer edge to make sure it's driven all the way. Luckily, I have long fingernails, and I can reach my fingernail in here to feel if it's gone in, and it has gone in all the way so all right so there you go this hub's all ready the new uh rate new bearing races are in so this one's all ready i still have to uh i went ahead and knocked the races out of this one so i'll knock the races in on this one so this actually worked really good you just got to make sure that they're seated all the way like i said i just took a wheeze tool and cut that so this will shrink so you can easily get it out just make sure you get the races all the way in. So hopefully next time you see us, we'll be reassembling the trailer. All right, well, we're back on doing the bearings on the trailer. I'm home now, and uh, here are my, my new bearings. And I kept saying um, seats. I don't know why, but I meant to say bearing races. All the bearing races are installed. I don't know why I keep saying seats. I, I don't know what's going on with me. So anyway... So I knew this was going to be a problem is here are the seals, the original seals that came in it. And you can see how thick the metal is right here. Well, these are the seals they sent me because these are inch and a half seals and these are inch and a quarter seals, even though I told them, and now it does look like it's oblonged a little bit. Oh, well, um, <clears throat> even though I told them, you know, and I checked the description, the description was proper. And even the part number was right, but they still sent me the wrong seal. So I went ahead and I emailed them. And they're supposed to be getting back to me with the right 
stuff. So then I did a little bit more research since I'm not actually probably going to put this trailer into the water to launch my boat. It still, they say, is a good idea to use a, <clears throat> a marine grade grade grease. This grease is, uh, is a heavy duty calcium sulfonate grease formula. So I do believe since it's sodium or calcium, I mean, that um, it's supposed to hold up the salt water better. So I went ahead and bought some Lucas Marine grease and I went ahead and I bought a brand new uh, grease gun. And we're gonna try to get this bled out so we can bleed the so we can bleed the air out of the gun so we can get the guns. And we also went ahead and we bought the knockoff bearing buddies from Harbor Freight. <clears throat> and basically what they say on the back, if you read the in, in if you read the instructions, it says to clean all the grease out, put everything together, and then just pump them full of grease. And when grease comes out of that little hole there, they're done. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to go ahead and pack the bearings. <clears throat> Excuse me. I'm going to repack the bearings the old-fashioned way to make sure there's grease and everything. And uh, then when we're done, we'll go ahead and we'll pack these full of grease. Um, I just don't trust that these are going to get the grease all the way into the inner bearing. They should, but I don't trust it. So we're going to pack them the old-fashioned way. I do have a bearing packer at work, but the bearing packer at work has regular wheel bearing grease, not marine grease. So let's see if we can get this uh, grease gun filled. And grease guns are a pain in the butt to fill. So let me show you what I usually do. So you have a cap, you pull the cap off, and see how much air space there is? First thing what I usually do is I usually take a little bit of it, put on my finger. Here we go, getting dirty now. <clears throat> Since this is a new one, there's a plunger here. That's what plunges the grease back and forth and also causes a vacuum. I always take and I f try to fill that cavity up with grease. Okay? So now that that's done, let's get this rag. <clears throat> So next thing you do is you pull out on this rod all the way and that will keep it locked. Now the grease goes in where you took the cap. See on this end here it's got a pull tab like a beer can. You insert the grease in the grease tube into the tube like so. Now what you do is you go ahead and you pull your beer tab off and any grease in there you want to get out so this is where you have to bleed all that air out actually this came with the instructions and the instructions said just to take and tighten this a couple threads to let the air bleed out you want to make sure it's in there then you push let me be sure it's on there then you push on this to release that. Now that is released and should be pushing the air and the grease out on this end. They said to keep that loose to let the air escape. <clears throat> sometimes this works, sometimes it doesn't. Then you're supposed to just start pumping until you get the grease flowing. And you got to do full strokes to be sure to get that ramming rod so it will start feeding grease. Now I got a little bit of grease there that started coming out from the stuff that I put in. Sometimes the best thing I find is you just keep pumping it for a while sometimes slow, sometimes really fast. And sometimes you just wanna let it sit. There it goes. It just, can you see? Let me turn the screen back on. So there, it just went ahead and bled because now I'm pumping out good grease. So we're not going to waste that grease. It's, 
it's good, still good. So now we're just going to go ahead and tighten the grease gun up the rest of the way so it doesn't come apart on us. All right, and then I also have pushed this so this will slide in all the way. So now that we have our grease gun <clears throat> um, ready to go, what I like to do is we'll go ahead and put a bunch of grease in this cap. So I put a bunch of grease in the cap, and you just take your finger out and grab a bunch of grease. And now this is the inside part where the seal goes, and you want to coat this race really good with grease. Okay. <clears throat> So, let me get some more grease out of this tube here. Alright. I know people are going to say bearing packers are so much faster, but I didn't want to have to change grease on my bearing pack. So I'm going to show you the old school way of packing a bearing. So you have your grease. You take your grease, if you're right-handed, you put your grease in the left palm of your hand like so. Then you grab your bearing <clears throat> and you take the, the more opened end and you start pulling the grease into the bearing. And as you see, the grease is starting to flow through here. And you just keep doing this. until you see the grease coming out. So basically you're wiping the grease off your hand and it's getting forced up in there. And if you get too much grease here, you just wipe it off, you put it back in the other palm of your hand. And you just keep going around all the way. And if you're not sure if you got enough grease in there, you just keep going. Just keep going. And you can see how it's pushing out right there. So. Once you've done that, and I do believe that is plenty of grease in that bearing, you put a coat on the outside, then this goes in here, like that. I usually wipe that around. <clears throat> Let me, uh... <clears throat> These orange gloves are great, too. They clean up really nice when you're doing stuff like this. Now I know I probably should not be reusing these bearings, but I have not gotten any new bearings, and they look pretty good. The one looked a little waffled, but I don't think it, maybe it was just an optical illusion. So now you, you set your seal in there, you take your hammer, and you just tap it in. So now the inner bearing is done on this side. So now we're just gonna wipe this off. And we're gonna do the same thing that was the inner bearing. We're going to do the same thing for the outer bearing. We're going to take grease out of our little cup and we're going to put it all over the race to be sure there's plenty of grease in the race. <clears throat> Excuse me, um, I know it's the middle of summer, but the leaves here are falling out of the trees because we haven't had the trees because we haven't had a lot of rain, and I do believe that they're choking me up out here. So. Go ahead and put some more grease in the cap here. And we're going to do the same thing again. We're going to take our bearing and have the open side again. So basically what you're doing is you're wiping the grease into the bearing. And you're going to do that all the way around. Grab your bearing and just start, you just grab a little bit of it at a time and you can see right there how the grease is coming up through the, uh, the bearings. And you rotate a little bit, you do some more, rotate, do some more, and you just keep doing that. 
until you see grease coming out. So now that bearing's done and that bearing will go in here. So basically this hub now is ready to go on the trailer. So what I'll do is I'll go ahead and I'll do I'll go ahead and do the other one and get that all ready. And we're just going to run these grease seals for now. Like I said, I'm really not going to be putting the boat into water. And I'm just going on local trips right now. They're supposed to send me another set of bearings when they do. I'll just take it back apart and uh, put the new bearings on. And now these bearing, these fake bearing buddies, you're supposed to put a piece of... That will go on next and you'll beat that on. And then I'll fill the rest up with grease like they say you're supposed to. So let me go ahead. Oh, and... Uh, so after we now after we have this now what happens is is the nut goes on you tighten the nut up tight as you can get it then you back it off and you just snug it and then you use a new Carter key to put through and then you put the new hub cover on the fake bearing buddies um, and you pump them full of grease. All right, let me get the other one done and then we'll probably start putting it on the trailer if I have enough time tonight. If not, it'll be tomorrow. All right, well, I'm trying to get this video closed out before I lose all the footage because I just noticed my camera went back to, like, January 2015, so it's going to be hard for me to find the video on this camera. But anyway, let me go ahead and uh, let's go ahead and get this finished up on at least the one side. So I had my son spray this down with WD-40 to keep it from rusting. And it's got a little surface rust on it, but it's okay. So then, <clears throat> oh, my goodness. After we get that wiped off, then I always like to put a little coating of grease on the axle okay so now the next thing you want to do is you also want to be sure the seal in here has a little bit of grease on it so it doesn't burn up dry so now your bearing and your hub assembly will all slide on here like this here's a little extra grease we'll just put on the rag here so on this one here what goes next is there's a washer and then you have your retaining nut. So your retaining nut screws on. All right. And I just use a pair of channel locks. Any pair of channel locks will do. And you want to tighten it tight. That gives the bearing a preload. Then you back it off. And then you just snug it up. Now, on, on this one here, it has a hole for the Carter key to go through. So you have to take and it's a give and take. If that's too tight, which it is, then you want to loosen it up to the next hole. And that should be plenty. And now you put your Carter key through all the way. There's a little bit of nasty grease left over in there. And then you take and you, I like to bend that one up all the way and bend it over. And then I just like to snip the bottom one so it's out of your way. So that's good. The nut's a little bit looser than I like it on this, but it is a trailer, and it's, there's, it's just free-flowing, so it should be good. So now we have our new bearing buddies that we're going to be putting on. And on these here, they're supposed to be the right size. Up, oh, already run into a little bit of a problem here. It's hitting the top of that Carter key. These are the Carter keys that came in that set. So let me bend the Carter key down so it doesn't rub. But is that going to stay down? Yeah, it should stay down. Let me, uh, let me straighten this out. And re-bend this. There. So now it doesn't jump up. So now the bearing buddy fits on there. I hope this doesn't fall off the rack. And they tell you what to do is to take a piece of wood and put a piece of wood on here and just drive them home. And it went on all the way. 
as you can see it's seeded all the way around so there's the grease hole they were talking about that you pump it full of grease until grease comes out of that hole so let's see if we can get the brand new grease gun these brand new grease guns sometimes the tips are really hard to start there I think it just went okay there we go so now we're just going to go ahead and pump this full until grease comes out of that hole there it could take quite a bit of grease hopefully it doesn't take that much I don't want to have to buy another tube to do the other side. Up here it comes. This is spring-loaded inside, and it's a, the washer inside starts coming out up, and there we go. There's my grease coming out. Oh, man. This is a tight-fitting new grease gun. No grease came out the back, which is good. That means my seal is still nice and tight. So, what I'll do now is I'll just wipe this down. And they have these nice little caps that fit on to protect it. I try to push all the air out so they stay on. And there we go. This side's done. I gotta do the other side and get the wheels back on. But I think this video has gone long enough to show you how to um, take apart the wheel bearings on a boat trailer and to repack them. And uh, I wish I would have had new grease seals, but I couldn't get them because I wanted to close out this video. And as you see, that's just the grease there that I um, put on the axle shaft. So those seals are still good. They're holding the grease inside. If that, if that seal wasn't working, the grease would have, that I pumped in here would have come right out, and it has not. Nice and smooth. Listen. Before, remember, it sounded like rocks. So there we go. That's how you repack the bearings. And actually, not only repack the bearings, but replace the bearings and the races on a boat trailer that has no brakes. And how to put on the Hallmaster bearing style bearing buddies all right everybody thanks a lot for watching please subscribe if you like the videos please give me a thumbs up and uh, please comment and share